Well, uh, the Farmer Pre Love You Run for Women is on June 12th at Parc Maisonneuve, and it's a big annual run and walk to raise awareness and funds to support the MUHC mental health mission through the Montreal General Hospital. And joining me today is Stephanie Guiou, who is gonna share her story with bipolar disorder, and Dr. Karine Igartua, who is the psychiatrist in chief, the newly uh, recently appointed psychiatrist in chief of the mental health mission of the MUH, MUHC. Um, so first off, Stephanie, uh, you have this event coming up, you're participating. Uh, I know the uh, registration closes on June 7th and the article that I'm gonna write will give people the details on how they could sign up. So you've decided to share your story of suffering from bipolar disorder. Why did you decide to go public? Um, well, I was always able to draw inspiration from people who shared their stories. I always found that incredibly powerful. And if I'm able to reach someone and, and uh, make a difference in their lives and showing them that it's totally uh, possible to have a normal life and, and really, um, you know, aim for our goals and, and hopefully achieve and surpass them. Um, it's a story that I think is important to be shared and I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Doctor, uh, very brave for people like Stephanie to step forward. And I'm sure you would, you, you see a lot of patients, a lot of people. Um, I think you, the more people who do this, the better. Would you agree? Absolutely. And, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank Stephanie for coming forward. Um, you know, we, there's been a lot of talk about mental health over the last couple of years, and, and that's great because there's a bit of an awareness, but there's still a stigma when it comes to mental illness. Eh? And, and, and we even talk about mental health issues almost as a way of negating uh, mental illness. You know, if somebody has um, ulcerative colitis or they have Crohn's disease, they're not going to talk about having digestive health issues. They're going to talk about the illness that they have. Um, and I think that's very important in psychiatry too, to be able to say, yeah, we can all relate to being sad sometimes and being anxious sometimes, but there's a real difference between, you know, having a bad day and having a mental illness. And I think it's important um, that people like Stephanie come forward and, and help educate about um, how, how serious mental illness can be um, and also how hopeful it can be because with the right treatments, people are able to um, control their illnesses and, and have, as, as Stephanie was pointing out earlier, very normal lives. Stephanie, what were the signs when you first went for help and that you found out you had bipolar disorder? Um, I, I, I'd been manic at the time, so uh, I wasn't eating, sleeping. Um, my thoughts were racing really fast. Um, I, I I was, uh, there was a lot of hyperlinks, so I would link things that had nothing to do with each other and come to conclusions really rapidly. Um, and I wasn't really aware of it at all. Um, so it was my family that noticed the symptoms. Uh, doctor, is, is that, uh, is that something that uh, a lot of people maybe don't, don't act upon and they see these symptoms and they just let them go on and on? I mean, uh, do you see a lot of that? Well, certainly what Stephanie brings up is that with mania, uh, particularly in the beginning or in the first episodes, people don't really realize that there's something mm -hmm. um, different or faulty about the way they're thinking. Uh, and sometimes people with mania actually yeah. feel really, really good and they have a lot of energy and, uh, and, and, and they feel good about themselves. And so these hyperlinks that Stephanie's talking about are, are, are sort of errors in, in thinking that can lead to faulty conclusions and then to, to decisions that seem right to the person at the time, but end up being terrible in terms of their life, uh, you know, either, either spending too much, buying things that they don't need, um, you know, jumping in and out of relationships, all kinds of decisions that they make based on this faulty thinking. And so it's true that often uh, it's, the, it's the families and the friends that sort of notice um, that, that, that something is off. And, and certainly that was an issue during pandemic when people were more isolated, their social network, their safety network was much less um, because people weren't seeing each other. And so unfortunately symptoms developed and there was nobody around to say, hey, you know, maybe, maybe you're, you're a little bit off and, and maybe there's something we should, we should address. Yes. Stephanie, how are you doing now? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, I'm stable. Um, there was, um, 
there was a manic attack that um, I experienced over Christmas time. Um, it, it was due to isolation. And what was really nice was the tools that I developed in therapy uh, with my therapist at the Allen Memorial um, actually were useful because I wasn't seeing anyone during those three weeks. And ex exactly like Dr. Igaruta um, said, it was, um, I, if it wasn't for the fact that I had my journal and, and my list of things to look out for, um, I, I was digging myself into a hole. Um, so again, those, those tools are so necessary and so valuable when it comes to uh, recovery. Uh, to conclude, uh, Dr. Um, off camera, Stephanie told us about how difficult COVID was for her and she did suffer a mania and was, you know, and a lot of I know, people who don't have bipolar disorder, the average person, I, I am freaked out by COVID still. I'm freaked out now that I, I still wear a mask everywhere and I see people without masks and I go into the grocery store and I don't feel safe. So COVID is still with us, but it's been a tough couple of years for people and certainly regarding with mental health correct? Yeah, it's been tough and it's been tough for different reasons for different people. So illness, anxiety, as you're describing is one of them. Uh, isolation, as Stephanie described, is another. Um, you know, some people had very real psychosocial impacts as well, uh, losing their job or those people who are in the healthcare system overworking. Um, and, you know, there, there are certain things that we all need to do to keep our mental health, right? And so now I'm, I'm not talking about just people with mental illness, but all of us, um, there are things that are good for us. Um, and, you know, sleeping right is important. Exercising is important. Um, uh, seeing uh, people that we love and people that we, you know, that we are connected with is important. That sense of community, that sense of belonging. Um, and all of these things were, were disrupted during COVID. Um, and I, I think it's great that we're having this race now uh, or this run or this walk, because really it's, it, it's not just for elite athletes. Everybody uh, is welcome to join in. We've got a 1K walk, we've got a 5K walk, we've got a 10K run, you can do anything in between. Um, but what's so great about this edition is that after two years of virtual editions where we didn't get to get together, this is our first uh, back from COVID live edition, Parc Maisonneuve, we're gonna be in nature, uh, we're going to be together. It's going to be celebratory. So we're combining nature, exercise, and community, which are all things that are known to help mental health. And so I think it's a great way to to fundraise, to to raise awareness, and also to uh, contribute to all of the participants' uh, sense of of mental health. So so yeah, it, it's it's a great way for me to say, okay, let's leave COVID behind and let's try and gain some normalcy. Well said. Well, thank you both for your time and keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right. Great having Stephanie and Dr. Igartua, whose pronunciation of her last name I finally mastered. Thank you.